Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller with Inner Integration. And right now tonight, I wanna to give you five ways to disarm a toxic person. Have you ever met a toxic person? Maybe you had some kind of encounter with them in the moment and you got sucked into their agenda. Like whatever it was they were trying to emotionally manipulate you about, you got sucked in and then maybe afterward you just felt awful. Maybe like you didn't even understand what happened or how it happened and you were just like, oh, I coulda, woulda, shoulda done all this other stuff, but you just didn't think in the moment what you can do. You didn't know what tools you could use with a toxic person. So chances are you know at least one of these people. Maybe someone in your family, maybe your intimate relationship, maybe someone in your friend circle, someone at work, or just random people that you meet in society. So I have five ways to help you disarm a toxic person and opt out of their game. So plus, if you stick around here, you're gonna learn some really helpful phrasings that you can use, like mental Tai Chi, right? So when a person comes at you with a covert, aggressive manipulation tactic, you can kind of use these phrases to Tai Chi that away. So you don't get involved in the attack, you don't go on the self-defense, you don't really feel horrible afterwards because you kind of just moved the stuff away. So the very first thing that you can do is to breathe. <sighs> take some deep breaths, right? You can always take three breaths before you respond to someone. When you start focusing on the breath, that makes you present. It brings you into the moment. You become like totally mindful and present in that moment. You start to notice new things. You start to notice maybe your heart's palpitating. Maybe your hands are sweating. Maybe you notice how that person is triggering you emotionally. Maybe you're like, man, they always just, they hit on that shame thing. They just know how to imply you're not worthy right and you notice man that's the trigger every time right so you're catching on the more you breathe the more present you are the more mindful you are of what's going on number two is set a new boundary and enforce it that boundary might be as simple as saying no maybe you're at work and the toxic person maybe it's your boss or another coworker. And they're just trying to get you to take on the extra work. They always want you to take on the extra work, right? So you say, I'm sorry, I have a lot on my plate right now and I simply don't have the bandwidth for it. We're gonna need to delegate that to someone else. You know, you start saying no in some way, maybe in your intimate relationship, you know, the person's always asking you to do something for them, like always, always, and you never get to pick you first. And so finally that night you stand up and you say, no, I'm not gonna watch that series with you. I'm gonna go do this thing for me. You set a boundary, you say no, and you enforce it. Make sure you enforce the boundary or the person is gonna think you're not really serious about your boundaries, right? So number three is to observe. That means watch it like you're watching a movie. Like you're not you and you're not the other person. You've separated yourself from you and this other person. So it looks like something's happening with the feed. Hopefully it's okay. I don't do this very often. I'm gonna get used to this. So when you're observing, right, you've now separated yourself. You're watching like a movie. You can see this person. You can depersonalize the abuse. You're not caught in the drama because when you're caught in the drama, you're gonna wanna immediately emotionally react to what they're doing and that's how they win. That's how they get you is when they get you to emotionally react. Right, So you don't want to get upset and angry. You don't want to act really happy and positive either because either emotional reaction, they're just going to hone in on that and somehow manipulate it. So when you're observing things, it becomes less emotional. You can detach. You can watch the movie. You can see things happening from a different perspective. It gives you more of a delayed response and it gives you a lot more power in how you respond. So number four on this tactic list is to guard your attention like your life 
depends on it because it probably does. Where you focus your attention is where you focus all the power of your mind. And that is the greatest tool that the narcissist, the psychopath, the sociopath, the borderline personality will use against you. They want to direct your attention to something. They want you to focus here. They want to elicit a certain emotional response, thereby controlling your behavior, right? So if you control your attention and you catch they're trying to pull you down that way and you're like, "Mm mm-mm, and you keep that attention where you want to keep it, you cancel, you delete, you redirect towards whatever it is that you actually want to pay attention to. You know, they'll like to invite you to doubt yourself, for example. And, you know, maybe you tell them about a hope or dream you have for the future. And they're like, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's like the seed of doubt, right? And you're like, mm-hmm, yeah, I've already thought about that, but not interested. Maybe it's a fear. Well, you know, you should be really, really afraid because of this or that, you know. Maybe you can't do it. Maybe it just all falls apart, you know, and they try to talk you out of it. And you just say... No, thank you. And you focus your attention on the positives, on your strengths, on how, you know, you've done this already or something similar and you can do it again. You know, maybe they even like try to entice you to take actions against your integrity. 